I don't know if you've ever wanted to start a project thinking that it would be fairly straightforward, but halfway through you realize just how much time and effort it's going to take. This is one of those projects for me. I decided to 3D print a Nerf gun. For me, it all starts with a basic drawing and design. I find it super hard to model anything in CAD without having a drawing of it first. After taking a lot of inspiration online, doing multiple sketches and revisions, I finally settled on this design. After multiple days of 3D printing, it was finally time for the final assembly, or so I thought. And we'll get back to that later. Since I know nothing about designing Nerf guns, I wanted to make it as modular as possible. In doing so, I could design each component individually. This is the base, where everything else is connected to. It's extremely simple, it's just a rectangular prism with holes that everything else can bolt onto. I went with a few redesigns, not necessarily because I had to, but because of a few failed prints and I took that as a sign. So after those failed prints, I finally caved and decided I couldn't procrastinate printer maintenance any longer. This is what I found. The extruder gear was very much so eaten up because of that failed print. And look how disgusting this hot end is. It's uh, definitely due for a cleaning and a new nozzle. I don't know how obvious it is on camera, but the old nozzle on the left has a way bigger diameter than the one on the right. And they're both supposed to be 0.4 millimeters. So yes, they were definitely due for a change. Looking at the before and after, that definitely helped my layer adhesion and my random under extrusion issues. I don't know if anyone else goes through this many iterations on their projects, but if you do, for the 10 people watching, let me know below. So now I'm working on the barrel module of the project. It's pretty simple. Four bolts bolts it onto the base. And there are two bolts which clamp down on a brass barrel. I went through quite a few iterations on this module, not because I necessarily had to, but one of the reasons was to make printing slightly easier. Another thing I wanted to do was measure my bolts properly so nothing was protruding. And I also wanted to add a recess for that nut, just to make sure tightening things down would be that much easier. Now I will be assembling the mag holder. This is the catch spring that holds the magazine in place. Unfortunately, I printed the orange piece at a smaller layer height and layer width. So the spring portion actually failed on this print and that is why I will be reusing this gray piece instead. Designing this magazine release was actually pretty straightforward. The only thing I had to do was find out where the sketch offset tool was since it was my first time using FreeCAD. And then I had to figure out how to do Boolean operations between two parts as well. I did go through a few iterations on the main part of the mag release uh, just to try to fix my layer adhesion issues through Cura. But I later found out that was a hardware issue and you can see I fixed it in this white print here. Next up, I'm going to be installing the plunger module. The module is going to be housing the plunger tube as well as the ramrod which pushes the nerf dart into the barrel. It's going to be housing the plunger. Uh, the spring and the catch for the plunger and the catch is going to prevent the plunger from pushing forward until the trigger is pulled. So this component is the prime slash handle. It's a pretty simple design. If you look at my first iteration, it was actually way too small. I sort of lost perspective for how big or small things would be in the CAD. So for the second iteration, I used my hand as a reference.
And finally, I'm going to be installing this end cap, which keeps the spring in place. I ended up drilling bigger holes into the end cap because I couldn't get my screwdriver to fit in all the way. But in hindsight, I realized I could have just used an Allen key. So here she is in all her glory. And off camera, I tested it out already and it broke. Uh, this failure right here and the other failure is right here. I don't know how long. It kind of failed. It kind of failed quite spectacularly. Um, that was not expected. It was expected. I could see it cracking before it failed, but I got too excited and tested it off camera. And uh, yeah, that happened. So I'm going to reprint some parts. I'll reassemble this gun off camera and I'll be back. One more thing. There's also this gap. And when I was testing it, I noticed that the performance was pretty much on par with the stock Nerf gun. So I printed some spacers to add some preload to the spring. Hopefully that gap will be fixed and that will improve the performance as well. Let's see how many shots this takes. So, I had a failure, again, and that's my excuse for not shooting a cool montage. But basically, what had happened was, I got curious again. So what happened was, I primed the gun like this, and I decided to pull the trigger. Why is that a bad idea? Well, if I show you this view, this is just a hole that's straight through where the ramrod can slide and the plunger can slide. So, if I fire the gun like this, there's no real air pressure that's gonna build up and slow this whole assembly down. But normally, where I would be firing like this, you can see there's all of this air to slowly slow down this plunger before it hits, which will really minimize that impact force. And because there's just this tiny little hole for air to escape and shoot the nerf dart, you get quite a decent amount of pressure buildup in this chamber, and that helps this slow down and it prevents the plunger from impacting the ramrod super hard, which would put a ton of pressure on this main base, which sheared basically perfectly in half, almost. So, uh, oh, lesson learned, hard work is hard, but I am tabling this project for now. Maybe there will be a part two, so stay tuned for that.